Welcome to my course on Charlie Christian. Over the next four sections, we're going to take a look at four Charlie Christian solos over blues changes. Each of these solos is from the album Charlie Christian, the Original Guitar Hero. Throughout this course, I'm going to talk about the way in which Charlie plays the changes, but more importantly, how he creates a system of looking at things on the fretboard to identify where changes happen and to navigate through them. This is something that when I first started getting into Charlie Christian and jazz guitar and swing guitar in general, this just completely opened my eyes to creating a way for each individual player to see the fretboard with our pre-existing knowledge and the things that we're learning and want to learn. I'm going to start this off with Charlie Christian's solo over a blues and F called Grand Slam. Alright, so if you're following along in the PDF, what we're going to do is break this solo down phrase by phrase and kind of go through what I think he's playing but also relate it to what I just said in this opening. So this first phrase, we're working out of this F chord here. We have... So what's largely going on is we're playing around what a lot of people would refer to as the major pentatonics. Now I'm not going to get into a lot of different scales here, but I'm going to see and try and relate this to the chord. So if we look at this F, we're playing up from the fifth of F, C, and adding that D in that is the sixth. And this is something you're going to see in all the solos and as well as a lot of solos from the swing era the influence and the, uh, um, the, the large component of using the sixth in your solos. So we have... And now we're introducing some dissonance, so that's up to your minor third, you know, take your typical blues lick and put it against, you know, more of the major tonality. All right, and that's a cool contrast. So we've got this working up the chord And then introducing the ninth of the chord, right? Or the second. That's the G. So already we've worked through two chords here. We've worked through an F6 and an F9. And now what's cool about here is we're just working down the chord. This is a typical thing you hear in a lot of, of swing era, but also bebop playing, and it's enclosing the third of the chord. So this is our ma the major third, the A, and what we're doing here, playing the B flat and then going below the A to the A flat, the minor third, and then landing on the A again. going right up to the C, the fifth of the chord. And that's definitely a huge Charlieism of you hear stuff all the time in his playing. All right, things like that. And that's something, you know, if you want to have, quote, a little bit of Charlie in your playing, definitely work on enclosing your third. So, so far, we have outlined the sixth, the ninth, and then we've enclosed the third. Now, do I think of all those chord changes as they're happening, and do you, I think Charlie did? No, no, I don't. But what I do is see, you know, the extensions off the basic chord, and I think that's the big thing to take away from that. And then we're just working back down, which is great. We highlighted the D at the top. Now we're highlighting it in the bottom or in the lower register. 
All right? And again, we have that cool little kind of hint at the minor third, that A flat, and then right back up to A. So again, this kind of lick one, what I would take away from it is mess around with all of your major notes and your extensions off the chord. Include some dissonance, throw in the minor third, or the A flat in this case, and encircle that A. You can do it either way. You can go from above the A to below, or from below to above, and then back. So one more time, this little statement. All over the F chord. Now we have this one. This is over the four chord, the B flat, and the 12 bar blues. So what we're thinking about now, and what I, what I think Charlie thinks, is here's our B flat chord, right? It's a vanilla B flat. And he's just working up it. So you can just kind of take up any, you know, start from any note. You don't have to play it verbatim. But, you know, start on any note of this B-flat kind of chord right here, or try it if you want to think of it like that, or you could add in the flat 7, that A-flat, and start. So in this case, he starts from the A-flat, and just works up it, literally outlining the chord grip. It's awesome. So A-flat, B-flat, C, and then jumps up to the G, which is pretty awesome because it's like a B-flat 13. Or you could just think of it as a, just a note outside of that normal B-flat triad, which that's probably what he's thinking in this case. So we've got... So just a triplet off the F to G, then to D, and then he just verbatim copies that from C to D down to B-flat. Literally playing just right in that shape. And again, this next phrase, going back to kind of the major sounding pentatonics, if you want, or just playing out of the shape, or working that third, fifth, sixth, then to the root. And that's something he would do a lot, is go up to the, the high F, or the high note, and then come down to the low octave of it and put the sixth in between it. Alright, so that's going from B flat back to F, to F. So B flat. And now we're coming to the C chord. Which is great. So you could either think playing out of here or playing out of here. Each is C7. And we're just working up from F. So F, A, B flat slide up to the C, then come right back down to the flat 7. Cool kind of little lick to emphasize that flat 7. And then... Kind of the same thing again from earlier in the solo at the start of it. Just working back down to the 6 with that little chr chromatic or enclosing movement. So that would be the first chorus. So again, we're just literally sticking in this region of the guitar neck and we've worked through one, two, three, maybe four, if you want to think of it as an extension or something, chord shapes. Really simple, but man, it swings and it sounds so good. So one more time, that whole first chorus, we've got... Now this brings us to the second chorus, which this first statement's awesome. We're now moving all the way up here, and we're playing out of, you could think of it, there's this F chord right here, right? You've got C, F, A, F. Some people who are familiar with the cage system or the cowboy chord kind of system, 
It's like your big G shape, right? It's super impractical to play, but hey, it's right there and you can visualize it. And this lick goes like this. Starts on the upbeats. So what we've got going on here, there's a, there's a lot to this, but and it's awesome. Where again, we're playing off of the triad and just adding in the sixth, a huge part of this whole sounds of the swing era. Then we're working up chromatically. So we went from A, now we're gonna go back down to B flat, up to B, to C, then back to A. So that's a cool little just chromatic idea. And you can hear, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff in the swing era as well as in Western swing. Um, Junior Bernard, for example. So that's what's happening, but there's a lot of harmony going on underneath that. Underneath it, if you think about where it's placed, it's placed at the top of the blues. Well, in a normal blues, you know, you could either have that full first four bars of just an F, or you could have a bar of F, a bar of B flat, and then a bar back to F, or two bars back to F. And I think that's what he's doing here. He's playing F, then B flat, because look, there's a B flat triad. And then, this is sneaky. What we have there is a B diminished kind of outline. So what that is, is if you have an F, I'm gonna do it here just to make it a little simpler. If you have an F, F7 goes to B flat, that's the four chord. And then a really typical way of getting back to the one chord is to take your B flat or your four chord, move it up a half step and make it diminished. So that would make it a B diminished chord, all based off of minor thirds. And then that resolves right back down to F. And I think that's exactly what he's doing here. F, B flat, B diminished, back to F. Really cool idea. Take it for what that is, and you know you can r manipulate the pattern of it. You know, start on a different note to make it your own kind of thing. But a great lick and a great lick you hear a lot of swing guys do. This next phrase we're setting up going into the four chord. So I'm going to play into it. We've got. So that's going from the, uh, the one chord into the uh, beginning of the four. And what we're thinking here is, here's our F7 chord, and we're just playing to the third, sliding up to it, and just coming down the scale. So we've got G, or I'm sorry, A, G, and then just coming down chromatically from F to E flat. And then you resolve to B flat. And what's great here is this is a B, uh, B flat arpeggio with an added ninth. That's how I see it. Um, there are other guys who see it different ways, but I think, I think that's what he's thinking because we've got that B flat chord right here. Now, if you wanted to add, this is like a B flat seven. If you wanted to add the ninth, you could do like that. Some guys will say it is outlined in an F minor six, like, that would be an F minor, right? Or you could put it right there for the sixth. Either one works, but what we're doing here is we're working into the four chord. So we're coming down the arpeggio, D, C, A flat, F, D. All right, and that's just a cool little outline. Again, kind of rem outlined of this grip or this B flat nine. So we've got into it. And then, so this is a great lick. We've got, and then we're just coming down chromatically from C, B, B flat, A, then he plays an open, and then goes up the chord. So let me show you that in, in context one more time. So 
So what that does, it's chromatically running down from the C. We're still thinking moving into that B flat chord. And what the open does is it's a placeholder. You can hear, it's not a mistake, you can hear it in a lot of his solos when he does a lick like this. It's to keep all the beats in line where the chord tones and the scale tones um, line up right on the strong beats one, two, three, and four, and the chromatics line up on the accents. And of one, and of two, and of three, and of four. So you've got this one, and two, and three, and then it gets back on track by that using that open. From there, we're moving up. Playing this B flat seven grip, right? Just like a Freddie Green style grip, we're just moving up it. So A flat, D, F, G, A, A flat. So a really cool thing that he does a lot, he'll like go up and down that, so. Anything like that, but just, again, it's relying on the chord grip. He's literally playing the chord grip. It's pretty awesome and extremely melodic. So we've got this. And that folds right into our F, right? If there's our F, we're just now playing A, C, D, C, D, major sounding stuff, right? And then we're playing So we're playing this minor third just for some dissonance. This is over the C chord. That will F going into C. And going up to the sixth. Again, we're just thinking blues here. We're not really thinking too much of the changes. And just coming down. So A flat, F, D, D, A flat, F, D, C, C. And now we're back into an F chord here. And this is cool, you're just coming up the triad, and instead of going to the F, we go to the G first, and then come down to the F, so it gives it a little bit of color. And then D back to C. So that whole thing. So a great example of not totally playing the change, but still being melodic and being bluesy over that C back into the F chord. So I would take some of these ideas and just work them and analyze them your, your own way with what you kind of know. This is just kind of based on the shapes that I've learned and based off the, some of what some people who are just, I think, experts in Charlie Christian, this is how he's really thinking. And throughout the next three solos, we're going to see him use the exact same shapes and a lot of the same basis for these ideas. But he has total control over them and total creativity because he'll move through them in slightly different ways that give him new life and new sound. And I think that's the big takeaway through this whole thing. Yes, we can learn some Charlie Christian licks. We can learn some about shapes and harmony. But it's about organizing your stuff in your own way that makes sense to you and that you can rely on and manipulate and change where you don't have to feel pressured to like reinvent the wheel almost. So I hope you enjoyed that and let's move on to the next three solos.